Shalom and welcome to Israel. You probably heard the news of the recent vote in the United Nations where the United States failed to veto and therefore the resolution calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. This is not good news, nor was it the proper way that a ceasefire should come about. Israel is at war, and this means something. It means that the war should not end for any reason until one of the parties, obviously, in this case, Hamas, they need to unconditionally surrender. This is how wars should end, with one of the parties unconditionally surrender. Now, of course, this would mean a few things. It would mean that the hostages that are being kept by Hamas and other terrorist organizations would have to be returned. The bodies as well of those who have died in the hands of Hamas would have to be returned. And also those who are the leaders of Hamas, they need to be brought to justice. And that's the word I want to focus in on, the word justice. What I'd like to share with you is this. God is on the side of justice. On October 7th, and let's get something very correct. On October 7th, it just wasn't a Shabbat, but it also was a biblical festival. One of what the scriptures calls the festivals of the Lord. And Hamas exploited that in order to attack Israel, killing, and again, we need to get our facts correct, 1,600 civilians were killed in Israel. And this is significant because this is what led to Israel declaring war on Hamas. And what do we have now? We have the United Nations calling for a ceasefire immediately. For what purpose? For the purpose of the month of Ramadan. Now, Ramadan is part of Islam. Islam is not a religion. Don't be misled. Islam is a political movement. And when we look at the characteristics of Islam, it is oppressive. There is nothing holy about it. It is not based in truth. We find that, that its founder simply assembled many different religious dogmas and principles and observances to try to unite people around an objective, and that is to rule over others and gain control. And that's why we have many nations being Islamic states. So we should not in any way want to have a ceasefire to honor a pagan false religion called Islam. And secondly, I would say this. When, when America was fighting against Muslims, for example, in the Afghanistan war that lasted approximately 19 years, was there ever a ceasing for Ramadan? Absolutely not. And therefore, again, we need to understand the reality of the situation. We want justice. We want those who took part in October 7th and thereafter in killing Jewish people for one main reason, because they're Jewish. We want them to be brought to justice. And every true believer, they will want justice. This is what the word of God demands. In fact, the word of God commands believers to execute justice, not to do what is going to be an asset for Hamas and having this ceasefire. We already have seen that Hamas has praised and blessed the United Nations for this ceasefire. We do not see any concern for the hostages and for retribution, a righteous retribution upon those who committed such heinous crimes, torturing children and others, raping women, doing atrocities. And now, what is the international community wanting? The international community wants to have to come out of this a Palestinian state, a Palestinian state 
will be an Islamic state that is like all other Islamic states, very oppressive, denying basic human rights, very oppressive to women as well. But yet, most of the world wants a Palestinian state. But the word of God warns with these words for those to divide up my land. What is God going to bring about? God is at work today. He's bringing the Jewish people back to the land as the prophets have promised. He is going to bring about a victory. Ultimately, we see prophetically that all the nations of the world are going to go up to Jerusalem to make war. They won't call for a ceasefire. They will want to destroy the people and the nation of Israel. And they attack Jerusalem to do what, what the world hates, and that is the worship of the God of Israel and his only begotten son, fully God, the son of God, Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. We need to understand that what took place in the United Nations is significant. It shows the world the changes that are taking place, especially in America. This is indeed a dark day for Israel-American relations. But let's be clear about something. The United Nations has no power to speak of. Their resolutions are meaningless. Israel has already stated that nothing's going to change with what goes on in Gaza. Israel continue to do what is necessary to bring victory for Israel and the Jewish people throughout the world. So let's pray together that God does indeed move and brings justice into this land and bring those who did these atrocities to justice, that Hamas and all terrorists within Israel would be destroyed. And we will see a change in Israel, a godly change, as we move closer and closer to the end times. Again, I'll conclude with this. Wars should end with an unconditional surrender without any type of terms or demands, simply surrendering and agreeing with what the victors demand. That is how war should end. But for some reason, we've seen the world forget a basic principle. Be praying for Israel. Remember that God is indeed the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He sent his only son into this world, and he will bring about a kingdom of justice and righteousness. And we see how far this world is from the character of the kingdom. But we know that is exactly where the end times are going. A time of darkness and falsehood. But truth and time is on the side of those who walk in faith. The faith of our Lord and Savior, Messiah Yeshua. Jesus Christ. May God bless you and shalom.